morning, everybody. How are we doing out here this morning? It's bright and early here in Southern Appalachia. We'll go out and do some stuff, cut some grass, and do some, try to do a story if we can this morning, if we can. Uh, it's something I covered a little bit with uh, Leo about a year ago. He come down and we camped a little bit and, and done a story or two down here, but I got a little bit more information on it than I had uh, before. So, uh, We'll go ahead and try to do it this morning. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you all for uh, subscribing to my channel, the ones that has, and and uh, I'm almost to a thousand. I'm hitting almost up there to nine hundred, almost. So, so the ones that haven't uh, subscribed yet, please uh, hit that uh, like and subscribe button if you will. But uh, what we're going to do this morning is a uh, we're going to drop down by Premier in County of McDowell County. We're going to check out a, uh, a monument down there that was a military plane crash back in the 40s. I know we covered that about a year ago. But I got a little bit more info on it. And, uh, well, I covered it with Leo. Leo covered it, actually. But, uh, I'm going to go also down to Jaeger. I go down and cut grass down to the old home place. And, going to uh, check out the old monument down there about uh, an ex ex expedition that came through back in 1756 from Lewis and Clark and why the Tug River was named the Tug River which uh, actually I live on the head waters of the Tug uh, the main head of it and it's uh, it flows all the way down into the Big Sandy so it's a Long River, it's bigger as it goes down toward where Leo's at, down that way. But uh, we'll talk about that when we get down there. So uh, let's head on down and we'll stop down and see if we can uh, learn something this morning that I didn't learn last time. So we'll catch you in a bit. Well, folks, uh, we finally made it down here. This is Premier, West Virginia. Uh, right below Welch. This is the uh, monument spot where they erected for the military transport plane that uh, crashed in 1942. In the head of this uh, holler here called Number Four Holler Premier. We got a list of all the men that was uh, on the plane. A lot of different states. A lot of different states uh, these people were from. It says here, uh, dedicated to the memory of the officers and the men of the United States Army who sacrificed their lives adjacent to this uh, site in a transport plane accident on July 1st, 1942. It says, erected by the employees and the management of the Premier Pocahontas Colliers Company of Premier West Virginia. He humble tribute to all that gave all that would be free. This here just after noon on July 1st, 1942, a troop transport plane crashed and burst into flames on a mountainside about four miles from the Dow County seat of Welch, West Virginia. All 21 members of the U.S. Air Force on board was killed. The crash occurred during a heavy rainstorm with thick fog. However, the crash was caused by malfunction mechanically. Uh, please excuse the traffic. We're just right beside the highway here. Hopefully we can get through this all right. While flying at altitude about 500 feet, the transport plane lost its wing, plummeted in a community garden ended up in a ravine. Debris was scattered on the mountainside for nearly 200 yards. It was the first fatal plane crash in McDowell County history. Uh, Lieutenant uh, Crawford headed of a group of nine state policemen who took charge with him, uh, Corporal Scales of Bexley Station. Crawford said that he did not uh, know if the plane identity had been established at this time. 
Our men will stand guard, he said, until the proper authorities arrive to relieve us. So uh, they were just trying to keep, you know, from, from people, onlookers, I guess, from coming in and, you know, looking at the crash. But it was a terrible, terrible accident. Uh, it was a, tra a tragic reminder that realities of World War II. Most families in McDowell County had friends and loved ones who were serving overseas. Hundreds of people turned out for the memorial service that they had at Welch uh, from time to time. There's uh, several people that, that saw the crash happen. Uh, this is one particular person here said that she and Miss Charles were on the back porch when they heard a roaring noise, looked up, and she said, saw a plane which appeared to be in trouble flying southwest in the direction. Let this truck get by here. I saw what looked like a, a wing fall off, she said. Then the ship appeared to go what looked like a tailspin and soon disappeared. Uh, she said that uh, called her husband, who was upstairs at the time, and said that he looked out the window in, in time to see the plane, plane fall. Says that it looked like that the pilot was fighting to save the ship. She must undoubtedly could see the see the pilot even in the plane. It appeared to be doing a barrel roll. Then the ship finally straightened out and then fell. My goodness, it's a horrible thing that happened. A lot of this stuff happened, though, a, a lot during, during those times. They was doing a lot of exercise, a lot of flying and stuff. And, this was a terrible thing, but not a lot happened around areas like this, though. This was this is really rural, and we live back back where a lot a lot of that stuff didn't happen. But, uh, I just thought I'd uh, stop by and let you see the area here, and see the little monument before we head on down to the Jaeger and check out the little. Uh, marker there, historical marker. So uh, we'll head down that way and check it out down there so we'll get that right back with you just in a bit. We're gonna pull off and go up in a holler here called Wilmore Holler. We have a uh, resort up here now. The ATV tour guides available. Check out the the dam. The dam's been here for many, many years. Uh, actually, I think they uh, used to fill their steam trains from this dam up here. But right here on the right hand side, where you see the grass, was a railroad track. And it went all the way through here, all the way in the cold. As a kid playing, I pick up the old spots and stuff on this old railroad track. Damn, it's all gone. They got a resort up here now. Figure there would be nothing of a dam of the water coming off because we have no kind of rain. Yeah, a little bit coming off. Well, made it up here. This is Wilmore Dam. There's some information on it here. What it looked like back in the day when it was built. Construction of it. Wilmore Dam, 1906. Wilmore Dam is located on Folsom Road in McDowell County. The dam is three miles south of Jaeger. On the south side, 52, three miles north of Rotafield. Wilmore is one of the most visited historical places by the out-of-staters. Norfolk and Western Railway started construction on the dam in 1904. It was first used in 1906. The, the dam supplied water for the steam engines that hauled coal from coal wood up and down the Ohio River. In 1959, 
When the diesel replaced the steam, the dam was no longer needed. The railroad has since been taken out, but the dam still remains. It's amazing to notice the fine detail and craftsmanship of the early 1900s within the dam structures, which is nestled between the mountains that offer the four season foliage throughout the year. Here is also lots of wildlife that can be seen here in the marshes, such as blue herons, geese, endangered salamanders, ducks, otters, beavers. Well, we got otters too. These waters are stocked by the state within the two, three times a year, which is great news for the fishermen. Also native to the area, you may stumble across black bear, coyote, wild boar, turkey, and deer, and raccoon. You may never know what you may see, as for a fact. That is for a fact. You never know what you might see around here. But yeah, I can remember back when I was just a kid that uh, we'd come up here fishing, swimming. It's, it's actually the water is very, very low right now. We haven't had any rain to speak of at all. But we're supposed to have some next week, hopefully. But uh, yeah, they, uh, they had them a reservoir here, had a set of railroad tracks come up through here, right by here. And then they would just, I guess they would just pump the water out of the, out of the dam until they're, until the, to, into their uh, steam engines. And this holler here, Wilbur goes, Keep traveling it for miles and miles. We'll come in in the head of coal wood over there. So actually the train tracks even went that direction. I thought I'd come down here <clears throat> before I left too and uh, show you the bottom side of the dam. It goes from one side of the mountain all the way over to the other side over here. Look at the big huge stones that they used to do this. This is this is stood test of time. Many many floods through the years. It was 1906 when it was built. Look at that. It's been a, been a huge. Huge job right there. Still holding back water from all those years ago. Cattails, we always call them cattails. Right there. They always grow in water. Cattails. Yeah. Try to get back on out of here. Okay, we've made it to Jaeger. I A E G E R. That's how it's spelt. This is my hometown. It's where I was born and raised. And then again, we still have traffic. It's right along the Route 52. And uh, we'll try to get through the traffic noise. But yeah, this is the spot where Lewis Camp, where uh, has been located in the area. It's not, uh, I'm not sure the exact location, but this uh, historical marker has been moved several times around here and there. did sit over here on a place called Johnny Cake for a few years and then it fell over the mountain there and was lost for a long time. Well, me and an older guy, his name was uh, Russell Long. Me and him got up with the Department of Highways to see if we could relocate it again. And uh, which we did. It was District 10, it was in the supply house at Princeton. So 
we went up and got it and we set it but didn't set it here i didn't uh, set it in another, another location they built this bridge over here that you see the truck went across so had to relocate it but anyway it says here lewis camp here major later general andrew lewis camped february 26 1756 with Virginia troops on the way to attack Indians who had been raiding the settlements, bitter cold and food shortages, disaster, brought disaster to the expedition. But you know, they, they went through a lot, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of trouble just to get here. They, they, they fit the, the cold, bitter weather. Uh, they was trying to dodge the Shawnee Indians. That's why they come up this way. It was a, a really rough terrain. I guess they figured they wouldn't be be attacked this way. And uh, we was going to discuss the naming the name of naming of the Tug Fork River. Uh, you used to call it the Mighty Tug, but <laughs> it's not uh, very large anymore. We can't even see it from here, Harley. Anyway. It used to be real, real, real rough rapids, so they say, back back many, many years ago. Nobody traveled through here. None, there was no roads, no no way of traveling at all. All they could do was come up by, by canoes. Well, you know, Leo was here last year, and we, we, we was talking about other places that had camped, but yeah, they did. I, I, I checked out, they had camped in a lot of different places. This is just one of the spots here that they, they erected a uh, historical sign. But uh, it goes to say here, the naming of the Tug Fork River. Uh, expedition of Major Andrew Lewis, who left Fort Prince George, Virginia, on Monday, the 9th of February, 1756, to pursue orders and ensued by Colonel Dinwiddle, the French and Indian War was in progress, and this was an expedition against the Shawnee Village, two or three miles up the Ohio River. Uh, excuse my, my uh, reading here. It says there were 35, some officers and men, original party, but many of them friendly. Cherokees were picked in, up in route the exp expedition to pass through the present McDowell County instead of taking an easier course. Instead of taking an easier course, it's not certain just how far the exp expedition got before it was called back, but it is certain that the hardship was great. The Shawnee villages were never reached. A journal covered by February 9th to March 8th, 1756 by Colonel William Preston, who was apparently a lower ranking officer company in the expedition, relates to this story as of fatigue and near starvation and deprivation, supply losings of canoes, and some days they did not not travel at all. One day they crossed the creek the river approximately 66 times in 15 miles. Oh my goodness. Man, that was something. Uh, in one entry, Preston tells about men marching on strength supplied by a half pound of flour a day and no meat except for what he could kill. That was a very scarce, was very scarce. Horses were often left behind because they could not go no farther. Sometimes uh, good horses wandered off and were lost. On March 5th, 19, 1756, this entry appeared in the journal. With great difficulty, March 15 miles, the river being very deep and often to cross near to kill the, the men as were utmost extremely for want of provisions. Okay, well, uh, we were wondering about the naming of the Tug Fork. There's a few different ideas about that. On one account, it says the expedition took the canoes at the present Jaeger. A short distance from that, Point encountered rapids with force them to tug and tug and tug at their paddles. 
all equipment went to the bottom and all the canoes upset. The expedition disbanded. Another, another historian maintains that a short distance from the Ohio, a scout reached by the party ordered to return to the civilization. Supplies were depleted and the men were forced to cut buffalo hides into tugs to be stewed for food. And that was another idea that they had that it was called the Tug Fork River because of that. So I thought I'd stop by here just for a few minutes and talk about this and before it got too hot. But history changes, time goes by. So folks, uh, thank you for coming by on this short little video I did. This is not gonna be, a, well, it ain't a very long one. So we'll catch y'all next time on Appalachian Roots with Dan. Thank y'all.